finally got the bit down above the side hatch so I've just been putting the trimming around here and with the trim on the outside and the inside we had it sitting um, in a boat outside for about a week and some water which made it much easier to curve and that's gone on quite nicely so I can paint that in a minute and that's all done for the rest of this week we're concentrating on all the drawers that which are going through the boat and sort of um, getting them all done together because it's just easier if you've got to make a drawer to do a, a you know several of them so there's three going under the dinette and there's one going under our bed um, and then we've also got to make the bedroom door after that we need to rewrite our list because at some point we've got to have a BSS done the boat safety certificate and although we haven't got gas they will check uh, the stove which has got to be drilled into place um, and a few other things so uh, we're just continually reorganizing ourselves and making sure that we've got all the really important things done before we actually go in the water because time is just going so quickly now Well, H has got the drawers finished under the dinette and I'm just giving them a coat of paint. Um, I know it's not usual to paint inside a drawer, but I like them painted and because they're plywood, um, it just begs to be painted, I think. Um, I had a lot of this green left over, so I'm using that for inside spaces and I'm doing blue on the outside. I decided not to do it cream the rest of the dinette because it's going to get kicked all the time and uh, it'll just show the dirt. So they're fairly large drawers and we built the dinette up on a base so that we could have this storage here. It obviously doesn't go all the way back because we wouldn't be able to open them up but we do have access to the back of this area through the seats of the dinette so if we have tools or things that we're not going to need very often they can be hidden down there. Um, we've put these on soft close runners so it makes them really nice to pull in and out and rather than handles which might catch ankles along there we've just um, um, drilled a hole out to get our fingers in and the front of the drawers will be blue, the inside green and I've done the inside of their green just so that you can see it. Just a tiny feature but you know it makes it look nice and then the other drawer that we need to do is that away. And then in here, Henry's getting on with the final drawer, which is going to go under the bed there. He hasn't got much room to work in there. No, no. Do you want the runners? There you go. That's the nature of the beast, I guess, isn't it? When you're building boats, you get less and less space to work in. Yeah, these are going to be the runners. And they'll be fixed under here. And the drawer at the moment is under construction outside. But that should be done within a couple of hours, I reckon. So we were going to have two, weren't we? But actually we've decided to have one deep one and just put a divider down the middle of it. Yeah, I think it would have been a lot of um, extra work anyway. Yeah. For not that much gain, really. Yeah. They, they'd be quite shallow as well, which may not be ideal. Yeah. It's a lot more work anyway, isn't it? And we're, we're going to run out of time if we do things yeah. like that. As it long as we've got a divider so that my pants and your pants don't get mixed up. <laughs> yeah, because I, I mean, as you know, I, I like to keep all my stuff really tidy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, I'll let you get on. This is super exciting. I've been waiting for these. So when Henry arrived many, many years ago, he came with these curtains, which um, were a fabulous fabric, but we could never find the right place for them. And so we've had them made up into curtains for the narrowboat by a friend called Jack, who's a whiz with the soft furnishings. And they're sort of like an enchanted forest with trees and fly agarics and blueberries and bugs. And they're just gonna be perfect. They've got lovely lining as well. And what I decided to do was to put sewing magnets 
in the curtains and then to match them up with countersunk neodymium magnets which will go into the window frames. Um, it's a slight palaver because you can't buy pairs like that so you have to figure out your north and your south and make sure that you've got all the right magnets to go together but it should work nicely I hope. So um, I wanted to have curtains which could come down because I don't like the look of curtains or shutters sitting on the boat all the time. I think it looks a bit cluttered. So these can be put away and just bought out when we want some privacy in particular windows. So that's my job for today and I can't wait to see if it works. Looks all right, eh? Because of the um, golden lining, there's a real glow coming through the trunks of the trees. But the only thing is that the countersunk magnets, they're very small, um, and I have three mil screws, which are sitting a little bit proud on the top ones. So I've had to double the magnets up there. So I've ordered some smaller screws which should get over that because the three mil is just a little bit proud and I think two and a half mil will sit nicely inside the magnet. But it works. Such a simple solution. We've had awful problems with the drawer of the fire the last few days. It's been a really high pressure and there's no wind at all and the boat was full of smoke this morning. So we wondered if it was blocked or needed sweeping and we dismantled the chimney and it doesn't, it's clear and we've had a look up under there and that's all clear as well. Um, so we rang the stove manufacturers and they said that on a day like this you need to just light a piece of paper and heat the chimney up um, and then light the fire. So while that's all been happening, the door itself has got really um, covered in tar this week and that's obviously an effect of, of a poor drawer as well. And I, in the past I've bought quite expensive glass cleaners but I've heard that just cleaning with ash can work um, and you need to use um, a damp cloth and it makes sense because in ceramics when you make an ash glaze you have to not get the wet ash on your hands because it's caustic. So we'll see if this works. Oops, let's take you down again, there we go. So you can see how black it is and that's literally happened in the last two or three days since we've had this really high pressure. So a bit of ash and a warm water. Oh, it's starting to come off. The good thing about this, of course, is that it, it doesn't scratch because the, the ash is soft and the cloth is soft. Wow. That's working. I don't know if you can see, but I've got um, this part here has actually cleared. Wow, that's really impressive. And I've only been doing it a couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. That's going to save a fortune in glass cleaner and no chemicals. Brilliant. I've been trying it on the top oven door 
but this isn't really tar caused by burning this is from all the stuff I've had cooking in the oven and that doesn't work on that so luckily this door comes off quite easily so I'm going to lie it flat and I'm going to put a paste of bicarb on there and leave it overnight and that should then wipe off in the morning this is the paste I've made it's bicarb mixed with a little bit of white vinegar and water um, and I've used this on oven doors um, in the past and it works really well so I'm going to leave that on for 24 hours and uh, hopefully that will come off nicely tomorrow this is the second lot of bicarb that I've put on this the first paste I left on overnight and it took about 50% off and then I put a second lot of paste on but I did it when the door was hot and it seemed to lift much quicker so I put that on a couple of hours ago and it's got the rest of the sticky stuff off so I'm going to rinse that off now and see how it looks there we go tiny spattering of freckles there but nothing much and I can see through it again now so that's great I much prefer to use bicarb than the um, smelly oven cleaners that you get but the trick is maybe not to let it get so dirty in the first place H has finished the enormous drawer under the bed and it's all painted up just drying off and I'm putting the handles on the front I found these gorgeous little handles with birds on them and I've got them in the bathroom that's the other one I'm going to get a couple of them for the bathroom door as well they're so pretty so I'm just going to finish this off now This I think is going to be my last job for this week. I've had a friend make this really lovely soap dish for me. It's got two holes for toothbrushes, somewhere to hang your scissors and somewhere to put your rings when you're washing your hands. But it's heavy and I've got to get it on the wall so I'm figuring that I'm going to screw this into the wall glue that onto the base and then put two screws there as well to, um, to stabilise it and take some of the weight. It goes. So my other idea didn't work but this should be better. of my old friend that's me done for this week holes are filled I'm going to leave that clamp in for 24 hours to make sure the glue has fully cured and then I'll paint that bit of wood the same colour as the wall and job done and I'm off home now to do some work in my studio Henry's going to stay outside making the door for the bedroom and we'll see you on the next video bye for now